your views. Our interviews on Spectrum Radio One FM ninety. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio One. I'm your host, Ed Mark. On Spectrum tonight, why has the central bank failed to turn inflation in the country? Uganda is experiencing tough economic times with spiraling inflation, far out of it, and a shortage of key commodities. Inflation, which stands at 21.4% per annum, is the highest in the years. There is also a major challenge as far as foreign exchange is concerned, with Uganda continuing to have a weaker shilling compared to other regional and major foreign currencies. Reports also indicate that Uganda's foreign reserves have been depleted, an indication that the instability with the current market may be harder to deal with. On the other hand, the Bank of Uganda is accused of not exercising its autonomy. It has been reported that the bank has allowed government to withdraw money beyond the acceptable level. At the same time, many people are linking current instability in the financial markets to continued circulation of all currency notes, which were supposed to be replaced by new ones. Those fronting this argument say the central bank was forced to print more money to take the election. Using its money to prove, the central bank has carried out several interventions at the situation since the beginning was passing day. So tonight we ask, how does the central bank foresee the current economic situation in Uganda? And what explanation would it give to explain the situation? Also, why has it failed to curtail some challenges using its monetary policy theory that it has done so effectively in the past? Our guest tonight, Dr. Adam Kuna, Executive Director of Risk for Research at the Bank of Delhi. Most welcome, Dr. Kuna. Thank you. Uh, we also are uh, joined by Ms. Christina Lupo, the Acting, Acting Director of Communications at the Central Bank. You're most welcome. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mbume, let's try to go to the roots of this problem. You guys go through what many have called an economic crisis. Some people don't think it's uh, an economic crisis. From your own perspective, how would you explain the economic crisis? Um, Uganda is not going through an economic crisis. I think uh, that one uh, is completely out. Uh, why do we say so? Because the economic crisis means that uh, the, the economy has completely crumbled. There is no investment, you know, uh, goods are cut. But this is a trigger where goods are available, but uh, the prices are high. So I think uh, there is uh, 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 a, a bit of difference there. Now, once, let us start with inflation. Inflation. Uh, given what, uh, yeah, what you have said about money supply, about you know, money to finance uh, the government center, all of them have no basis of what is there for the inflation. Inflation is basically being driven by food. Uh, we know we have had a drought for some time, not in Uganda alone, in the, in the whole region. Kenya has been having similar challenges. We already know what is going on in Somalia and, uh, and Ethiopia. So, first of all, inflation is no longer a Ugandan phenomenon because all countries globally are having inflation challenges. Even the, the most countries, you are talking about, uh, for example, United Kingdom, with inflation of 4.4, 4.5%, uh, they are targeted to 2%. Now, we may say that, well, but they are 4.4%, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, but they are targeted to so by the time UK gets the 4.4 inflation, it means that actually inflation is too high. So come back to our, our economy here. Now, let us go uh, stage by stage. If you look at all the centers of where you put a food prices in Uganda, or, and there are four, what we call CPI centers. We have Guru, Masaka, Arua, Kampala, Mbalala, Jinja, uh, Masaka, Ibuki. Where is the inflation highest? Inflation is the highest actually in Arua and the Gumi. So, so if you are printing money, it doesn't mean that really you have printed money and you only gave people in Gumi and Arua a lot of money than the people in Kampala or Masakao. So the question of money supply is out. So high inflation is not about demand, aggregate demand, but it's because of just supply. The supply of goods has been restricted because of what we call shock. One of them being drought that has really, uh, you know, meant that the uh, of food is applied to the market. And also the fact that even where you used to import food from out, like rice or from China, or sorry, from India, Pakistan, it also like it's becoming expensive. So you have party produced locally that has been, uh, you know, affected by drought. 
you have what you have been importing, like right, rice from uh, India, Pakistan, that is also quite becoming expensive because what exchange rate, and also the fact that where you are buying it, their their side is also the prices have gone up. So you have a combination of those factors. Let, let me break down the number. For example, in our basket of what we call CPI basket, or how we compute inflation, you you look at the uh, what people consume on average. The consumer to pay plus. So the basket of uh, an average household has food and non food. Now, the food component takes 27%. Now, if the food component takes 27%, and food prices on average, on annual basis, have been rising at around 40. Now, in the, in the month of August, for example, they rose up by 43% on annual basis. So if you get the 27%, you might try to buy. The annual increase from the food, you get something like 10 or 11 percent. So, which means that more than a half of 21 percent is actually being driven by food. So, you can already see that once you remove the food, actually you remain with inflation of around the 11 percent. So, which tells you that well, inflation has been affected by food problem in the region and globally, and uh, therefore it is not a question of money supply. Now, now, some of us say, but food is rising, but also the other prices are rising, including transport cities. Yeah, that's true, because if I am a seller of my trophy and the transport cost is rising, I have to put some of the increase over the transport charges on what I'm selling to compensate. So, it is not a thing. so the prices rise in one side affects the increase also in the other. So, it is a, it becomes a dynamic situation. So, Therefore, given that the uh, causes of inflation are not from the failure of the economic management, but rather because you have had a shock both uh, uh, domestic in terms of growth and also because of global, then the how to manage it becomes a, a different a, a different side altogether. All right. <laughs> I'd like us to talk, talk about that management. Of course, you know there are some experts like that. Uh, it's talking about the quality of inflation. It's talking about the drought. We also know about the limits, the limits and all of the crisis that led to the starting of the uh, prices, the euro crisis, uh, which has led to high, the, uh, yes. the high demand for the drug. And let's talk about what the central bank is doing to take Now, what the ba central bank is trying to, to do, we, we know we cannot control the origin or the origin of, of, of the, the first impact, which is food. So the only thing you can control is what we call the second round. Because now you don't want to uh, spill over from the food company continuously uh, going through the wage, uh, wage demand and other factors. So what you do is what you do, we con uh, try to limit the extent how the original impact spills over into the rest of the economy. So that's what we do in terms of what we call tightening monetary policy. What does that mean? Tightening monetary policy means that you restrict amount of liquidity that is in the system. How do you restrict it? You restrict it by withdrawing liquidity. You uh, withdraw liquidity through commercial banks. You give them instruments, treasury bills, bonds. You say to them they become attractive, so you withdraw liquidity, you hold it for three months, one year, three hours, whatever it is. So that withdrawal liquidity means that the commercial banks have less liquidity. Because there is less liquidity, the liquidity becomes tight and becomes very expensive. So if you go to the commercial bank to borrow money, you will borrow at a very high interest rate. Yes. So in the process, what are, what, are, what are we trying to do? It means that, well, before you go to borrow, the cost is already hitting you off. So you are limiting the extent to which you want really to get that credit. In the process, if you have a business, you have to say, okay, let me postpone my business venture for a while until the situation comes. If I, I am building, uh, if I want to start it, uh, Another any business venture or an investment, the best way would be let me postpone for a period until uh, the repeat situation is come and also demand is available. But otherwise, we will be producing for who? Because it means that once prices rise, average income is declining on in your term. So it means that once you are trying to invest, there is no demand because the consumers will not be there because their incomes are declining. So what, what has this impact? Well, of course, we see that the prime lending rates have gone up. Standard Chartered Bank, one of the English banks, one of the bigger banks, yeah. 23.5 percent. That's the prime lending rate, mm -hmm. which means there are non-prime lenders who probably get loans at 27.8 percent. 
to what extent does this come to the other for now? You know, it, it, it has, a, it, if you look at the, uh, the our monthly aggregate, uh, they all, the, for example, credit has started declining. That credit is declining. Most, most of the monthly aggregates, what we call money supply, in other words, and in declining. All the all the declining, declining yeah. So, yeah, they are all declining, which means that's why this state liquidity condition is already being improved, including currency in circulation, because currency is our liability. In, the, in technical terms, is what you have, uh, you, what you have applied. So once you reduce it, once you withdraw it, it automatically means if a commercial bank, for example, one of the members that have a commercial bank, by law, must deposit money with the central bank. So if you increase what they are going to deposit with you, it means they have rest to pay around giving <coughs> time. So already that is the and it's true. Okay. Uh, actually, in the, uh, I think the lending rates are moving from uh, the range is now from around 14 to around 33 in commercial bank. After 33? Yeah, so already. Because when we say the average is 21, because it is a weighted average, you have big borrowers. But there are some people who are already in some commercial banks who are already borrowing in the range of 33. So it used to be like 12, 28. So you can see that they are gradually, there is an impact. Let's talk about the economic growth. When people are borrowing less to finance their businesses, it's going to be part of the economy. How to what extent? What kind of what kind of economic growth can we expect for this year? It, obviously we, we don't expect to be seven percent, for example, we started with it. Because we can, there is no way you can get seven percent when you have inflation of ten one percent. Inflation creates uncertainty. As we say inflation is costly because every person's real income is declining in inflation. So you don't want People's real income to decline, and then we are targeting again 70%. That will be unrealistic. So we are expecting that the way it did, our economic growth will decline this year. Simply because today, uh, 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 as we constrain the liquidity, it will automatically increase into a real growth. So we are looking at 4 to 5, 4 to 5%, 4 to 5% in that way. Uh, but you see, because uh, uh, we always say in the uh, economy that uh, uh, monetary policy works in the last. Some of the actions you take today can go as far as one year down the road. In some countries, it can even take two years. So that's why here, for example, in the other developed countries, they're telling you I don't hold interest rates for next two years because they know the monetary policy will work through within the two years. So in our case, it's always uh, a note between six and one year. That's when the real impact will come. So, by the time probably the tightness will increase through the economic system, probably we'll have a less growth of around 5, 4, 5, and then probably by the time or the situation of the then probably economy starts getting up again. This is my business, but I'm already on tonight. What, why has the Central Bank failed to tell me to guests? Dr. Adam Mugun, Executive Director of Central Research at the Bank of the Central Bank. Uh, accompanied by Miss Christina Lupo, acting director of presentation at the Central Bank. You will be able to call in and continue to this discussion later. Dr. Mbume, let's pick up on the exchange rate. The exchange rate, the Venom University of Virginia, versus the dollar. Where is this likely to happen? I know uh, the reports have come out that Uganda is the worst currency in the world. Uh, you know, if we, it is true that the the killing has really affected the allocable state in the bank. But what is the cause? There again it comes to domestic and external. If we start with the uh, domestic, you have your our exports. We export the total volume of goods we export total around two point four billion uh, dollars. Mm -hmm. And most of these were uh, you know the coffee, uh, cotton, uh, tobacco, or uh, tea fish, flowers, they are all go where? Europe. Yes. What is the trend in, the, in Europe now? Since 2008, Europe has been hit by the economic crisis. Even now we are talking about double deep. So when it is double deep, it means that your export to that area becomes, uh, the value becomes more and more. Now, given where our exports are going and we are earning 2.4, the market now, where are your imports? So because the difference, what you bring in as the income will determine how much you can supply to the market to be able to import. And the difference will determine your, the price of the currency. Right. 
Our imports are total 4.5 billion dollars. Where do our imports come from? India, China, and Far East. Yes. What is going on there? The economies are booming, they are threatening uh, monetary policies. They are, for example, currency in China is appreciating. So, which means that with the same dollars, you buy fewer goods from there. So, you have a weak export side, and yet what we are importing from that side is becoming more expensive. And some of them can also see, for example, oil. Out of the, on monthly average, we take, we spend about 90 billion, uh, 90 million dollars, sorry, on oil import. Out of that, around uh, 30% is uh, for some generation, we all know. Now, to think about so, you, there is no way you can substitute uh, oil. So you have the imports that are heated, the prices are rising, you have your imports that are returning in value. The difference returning how the exchange rate will behave. So you find that after you know, on an area basis, you have a deficit of two billion. Now, naturally, the deficit will be caused by what is coming in as capital investment, FDI, what we call FDI. FDI comes from where? Europe, again. Yeah. Okay, not from China. So again, you are the Europeans again being key. Normally, the biggest chunk of FDI comes from UK. We know what's going on in UK. So, which means, therefore, what we call balance of payment is weak. So, it has to be the exchange rate to the system we call exchange rate market determined. So, when we say exchange rate is demand and supply driven in a protein exchange rate to the So, automatically means what you have brought in because you have sold things out and what you are buying out, the difference determines your currency. So, that's the demand and the supply. So the demand is high, the supply is low. So what it has to give in is the price which is exchange rate. Can you control it? No. If you try to control it, it means controlling it, fixing it, like some people have said, it means that you could be able to supply the dollars, the gifts you created the period. Yeah. How where would you get the uh, make a lot of it up? It means you would have a parallel, remember the what we used to call in the winter one of the variable? So again, we go back to window one and window two, uh, the Kubo, Kubo, Sibanda market, you know. So I, I don't think that's the way we want to go again. Right. Okay. The, the data is that probably this is the short term. See, simply because we don't expect that European problem will continue forever. So in that case, down the road, we know the situation will go. It can be one year, it can be two years. But we for sure know the thing will go. So that has been one of the main drawbacks of the thing. But also, like today, for example, currently, you have the euro falling to the lowest level against the dollar. So it automatically means that the shilling also has to give in. Because the dollar has gained against the other currency, so automatically the shilling has to lose against the dollar because it is international business. And indeed you can see that the today Kenyan shilling was in the range of 96. Uh, I think it was uh, one dollar. Our, our shilling has left the business stable, you know, today. That will move the much. But you can see that all those global development and speculation also come in. So you have a weak balance of payment, you have the global factor, you have the speculation, and it's in the future. All right, of course, what, uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, even though all these things are out there, it's a bad time for us. Market law seems to be applied. But then we also hurt ourselves by raising the central bank to buy debt. Well, I, 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 I think sometimes it is taken out of proportion again. They, because they just were not bought in a, on a day, in a single day, if you have to look for a day, they just were bought so sometimes back. In any case, it was a disaster. Probably a few months ago, that's not too long. I, I think it was some financial cycle. No, actually it was the, the process I think started in December. So that's what I'm talking about. And the 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 issue of payment uh, to, for the uh, for for the purchase of of those machines and whatever. I haven't seen them. I don't know the reply. I don't know whether they are machines or something. I think uh, the, the process started about more than one year ago. Yes. Yeah. So over time, paying around six hundred million over a year from the reserves. Uh, moreover, the reserves are not from Uganda. So for me, the reserves are already held outside. They are already held in UK uh, because of all reserves. You don't see the Bank of Uganda. 
Now, they are, they, we invest our reserves in yesterday. Yes. Currently, we have the, for example, we have 2 point, uh, around to almost 2.4 billion dollars of reserves. Yes. What interest rates are they earning in zero? The in the US, in the US, that's true. So, so if the government... Better will, buying this. Yeah, if the government wants to buy the gate, yeah, and the gate... Might well take it. Oh, they can take it. So yeah, they, they pay, pay the government borrow it. Yeah, they pay, they borrow it. How much what interest rate? Actually, the interest rate I think the market is uh, the way we, according to law, we uh, it is well the going back to Bank of Uganda Act. What does the Act say? If, bank, if the government borrows from the central bank, it has to be at the market time in the rate, which is equivalent to the Treasury bill. So they pay the, the Treasury bill? They have to pay it. Around 10%? Yeah, around 10%. So the government is going to pay? It has to pay. If you look at their uh, f uh, f uh, finance management uh, program, they have a program to pay in the next uh, two or three years. Pay the season as they do. Actually, in any case, already they have their revenues from some of the oil, uh, oil imports. For example, those can be paid back to the central bank. In terms of what they do, I, I don't think it's the. And then, uh, supposing the money was wa not spent, would it have su supported the exchange rate movement? No. Simply because we have already said the problem is a current account problem. Yes. So if you need to get the 700 and put it in the market, so what do we have? Because you can't close the gap of 2 billion with 700. So we have already said that. We've taken them off the hook. So I think uh, the question of the government, and in the case the government is always importing goods and services. Well, I these are productive goods, they are not productive goods. Well, it's also a question because if someone can say, you know, defense is also can be the government exchange. Okay. This is what from listeners on radio, and we're going for a, for a very quick event. Let's show you how to multiply your savings. Starting with the cash beneath the mattress to the savings in the bank are making money. Let's turn your savings into something with Super Save Reloaded. Super Save Reloaded brings you savings and investment accounts which offer you a sure and predictable way to multiply your savings. For more information about Super Save Reloaded, ask at your nearest Stanley Bank branch. Stanley Bank. Moving forward. My Federation, he's a true man, he's ambitious, but understands that he has responsibilities to more than just himself, and he works hard to meet them. In the beginning, he was tough, but Richard never gave up. With time, his dream has grown into a radio station. He has given a force to great ideas, which are many of his listeners, helping them achieve their dreams. Today, Richard is doing well, thanks to his principles, hard work, trust, consistency, quality. But Richard never shouts about his success, he's just who he is, special. So he is to men like Richard, who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste of the sauce. Nile Special, you earned it. Not for sale, 2018. Is your internet provider turning your world upside down? Broadband company offers fast and reliable internet solutions. And for the first 100 subscribers this month, we offer zero connection fees. Save up to 400,000. For more information on these offers, call toll free 0800 222 Broadband company, more than you expect. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Standing Bank. Welcome back. Welcome back. On Spectrum tonight, why has the Central Bank failed paying inflation? Our guests, Dr. Adam, Adam Mugume, Executive Director of Federal Research, and Ms. Christina Lupa, Acting Director of Education at the Central Bank. We give us for the inflation. Adam, I'll be talk to us about these two currencies that we have. Why should one country have two currencies by inside? When the governor uh, announced the launch of the and you can see it in New York City, uh, when, when the bank was launched, he made it clear that the local current suffering is to until the central bank is going to change. Now, the, the fact of uh, concurrent circulation is made tenable uh, by the fact that it was simply a change of business. 
the Central Bank was trying to change the physical properties of the bank in 1817 uh, to achieve advantages that are uh, inherent in the capital series. So uh, these include the uh, security features, durability features, change of sizes, and the uh, introduction of a new bank in the So this is uh, opposed to what would have been uh, a risk of the currency reform that would have affected the value and therefore had implications for the way we exchange. So uh, the, there was no need for a short term robust change where you require people to go and exchange and do things like that. So um, it was uh, really because of that, the need to manage a serious transition. So uh, uh, we've been hearing people make all sorts of allegations about the geo circulation, and we want to come out very clearly that uh, they'll need to manage the transition.